Hi everyone, it's Travis Weir with Texas Specialty Hunts. Uh, it's Friday. Sorry, uh, last night didn't work out for us to do our, our weekly broadcast, but uh, here we are on Friday. So we've been busy the last couple of weeks with uh, helicopter hunts, exotic hunts. We did a week of military training for guys that are actively um, are active in the military. We Every year we, we have groups out and we actually do some training with these guys in the helicopter, long range shooting on the short range. We do some thermal stuff. So good group, enjoyed those guys. Um, of course, we, we continue to do our day-to-day -day operations on our helicopter hunts with you guys. So what I wanna to talk to you about today is uh, the business side of the, the hunting industry. So when I started this, live feed about a month ago every week someone has a question about you know the hunting business on why is hunting so expensive these days so um we're gonna talk about that today uh feel free to jump in ask any questions let me get let me know where you guys are from tom reese is in so you know it just helps me answer all your questions you may have don't be afraid to jump on there um, and let me know what you guys actually want to know about the hunting business. So, like I said in a previous video, I started hunting professionally in 1991, and uh, the hunting industry today is much different than it was back in the early 90s. Um, some of it, yes, it's more expensive, but some of it's not. So the first example I can, I can say is back in 2005, 2006, 2007, when we really started having the genetics that we needed to fulfill our hunter's needs. Um, you know, I'm talking about deer that are 200 to 220. That's what we had back then. Those whitetails we were shooting back then, we were, we were shooting these whitetails from anywhere from 20 to $25,000 per deer. So, Today, in 2020, 2021 season, those same deer today are half price. So the same deer that we shot in 2005, 2006, 2007, and eight for 20 to 25,000, those same deer today are 10 to 12,000. And so the first question is, why is that? Well, the reason is, it's just like any other business. It's supply and demand. So everyone jumps on the bandwagon. They start managing, raising, whatever, these deer that these hunters want. And so today, everyone's got their genetics dialed in. There's more big deer on the market. You know, everyone has big deer these days. I'm not the only one. Um, you know, so there's a lot of good ranches out there that have great deer. Um, so... There's just a there's just a lot of big deer out there today, a lot of big pretty deer that we're looking for. So there's fewer hunters now. There's more deer, so supply and demand again. So we, we, we've been able to reduce our price on our really big deer over the course of a few years. Just the breeding cat caught up, etc. So not all hunting has went up. And, and, and don't get me wrong, it's still a lot of money for a whitetail, but, you know, that's what these hunters want, so that's what we produce. So we got Tom from California, Ryan from Roanoke. John wants to know, do we sell black buck hunts? Yes, we do. Um, we, have, we have tremendous black buck here in San Angelo at the home ranch. So, yes, we, we have plenty of black buck ready to go. You can hunt them year round. Um, you don't have to worry about the horns falling off, uh, their, their colors, most of the mature bucks, the dominant bucks, they'll be black year round. So black buck year round, you're good to go. So let's get back on the business end of, of, of the hunting industry. So uh, other aspects, yes, the, the hunts, the hunt prices have, has definitely went up. Um, the Western states, the, the, the prices have went higher and higher. 
Um, it's just kind of the opposite for the Western states, Alaska, BC, et cetera. So these states have seen a decline in trophy animals. And I'm not going to go into the ecology or the biology associated with why that is. Most of you already know why. Um, so there's fewer trophy animals available on free range type hunts out west. So the good ones are very expensive. And your mediocre hunts are mediocre priced. So you take a, a, a dull sheep, for example. Uh, 15 years ago, you could go with a very good outfitter um, and shoot a doll sheep for eight, nine thousand dollars. Well, now the same sheep in 2020 is twenty five thousand dollars just because the availability of these actual tags have decreased. We still got a lot of hunters that want to hunt these stone sheep, doll sheep, Rocky Mountain bighorn, desert bighorn, etc. But the tags are harder, harder to come by especially free range elk tags in the western states new mexico montana utah wyoming the private land tags are very limited and a lot of these landowners that have really really good good genetic elk are very limited so these tags bring a premium same with mule deer um so that's that's kind of nationwide what's going on here in Texas is what I really want to talk about, but I wanted to hit a little bit on why some of those other species has went up in price. So here in Texas, it's very unique. So we we can hunt year round. Um, we can, you know, our whitetails. We still have to we still have to abide by Texas game laws so we have a assigned season for whitetails um the exotics we can hunt those year round now some species are different axis deer we like to start hunting axis deer in late april march late april may june july august that's when our axis deer are in hard horn, the majority of them. So 90% of them will be in hard horn during the summer months. Tough on us because it's hot. Axis deer are tough to hunt, but that's when you hunt them. But we 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 do this because well let's back up. Let's go back to when I started. So when I started hunting in, in the early 90s, I was a one-man show. So I guided, I cleaned, I cooked. I caped, I quartered, I did everything myself. I was just starting out. I had a rifle, a pair of binoculars, and a pickup. And so I started hunting, and it developed. So, you know, as my business got better over the years, I acquired more customers. I got lucky, met some good guys, and they stood behind me. And uh, we did a lot of hunting really fast. And so as I grew, um, I had a, I had a full-time guide. Then I found the need. I needed, I, I, I needed a chef because I couldn't do it all. So then I hired a chef. Then I hired a cleaning service. And, you know, this is, this is years. It's not just – it didn't happen overnight. I'm talking about, you know – Eight or ten years later, I was able to do that. Um, Wenzel, <laughs> good to see you on here. Let's see. Um, so it's just like when any, any other business, you know, it evolved, and so I didn't I didn't get to where the company is today overnight. It's taken almost thirty years to get to where we are today. So the cost involved in running a hunting business is there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And so 
there are there are guys that don't own ranches. There are great guys that don't own hunting ranches. There are great guys they hunt other piece of people's ranches. And you don't have a great hunt with those guys. There's ranches that are owned by absentee owners that have a staff working for them. But are also great great ranches. I've hunted most of them, so I know most of those guys in the state. Um, most of them, a lot of these ranches have really tremendous lodges, um, good animals, and and you won't go wrong with those guys. But you know, the difference between my company and these other companies is, you know, we do it full time. Um, there is no absentee owner. There is no absentee guides. My guides are full time. My chef is full time. All my staff is full time. My cleaning crew, everyone works for us full time. My helicopter pilot, Garrett, he's full time. He lives at the ranch. Um, Macy, she's recently come on board with the company. She is our operations manager there at the ranch. She's full time as well. Uh, so, you know, I. Unfortunately, I hear a lot of hunters call and have not so good results with the hunts they booked. Well, most of the time, it's because they booked with a, an individual that doesn't do it full time. That's mostly the case. Because even with my guys, if I don't keep my guys, you know, hunting all the time, it's just like anything else. If you don't practice golf seven days a week, you're not going to go out there and win the Masters. So we all got to be sharp, including myself. If I lay off for a, a while and don't guide, you know, I forget things. So I believe keep these guys busy, keep them sharp. You know, we're professionals, just like professional golfers, fishermen, football guys. You've got to practice. You've got to stay involved with what you're doing or you forget things and stuff gets left. Any little detail, we've got to hit on all cylinders. So there are a lot of costs involved when it goes into the scale that we are now, you know, we've got, um, we do own the ranch. So we've got the ranch overhead. We've got the lodge. We've got animals to feed. We've got deer to feed. We've got lodges to clean. We've got repairs, maintenance. And I kind of put this on a little slide for you guys, you know, employees, we've got to pay all our employees. We've got our taxes. We've got overhead and we've got lots of repairs because we break stuff. That's just the nature of the beast. We break guns. We break helicopters. We break trailers. We break can-ams. We break bar stools. We break all kinds of stuff. You know, it just happens. And so there's always an ongoing maintenance program that we have at the ranch. Fortunately, my staff, Patrick, the chef that you met a couple of weeks ago, Jim Huntley, Garrett Robertson, all those guys, Bass, uh, Daniel Park, all those guys chip in and they handle it. We don't have to hire a lot of outside resources to, to maintain our things. My guys are great. All these guys have been with me for a long time, and they're awesome. I can't say enough. My business would not run as efficiently and let me do what I need to do without these guys. And everyone has their own little niche at the ranch and in the business to handle making you guys, when you show up, everything's ready to go. And that's what's important. You hire us to make your hunt a success. You hire us as a professional to make sure your customers are taken care of if it's a corporate hunt. And that's what we do. So all these guys work very hard behind the scenes before you guys show up to make sure that everything it's perfect when you get there and you get the hunt that you paid for. So let's talk a little bit about ranch ownership. Um, you know, I chose to buy the ranch years ago. And, uh, you know, I really never intended that ranch to be a commercial hunting ranch. It was going to be my ranch to, <laughs> to train dogs on. I used to be an avid field trotter, and so I was in – I was in horseback field trials for a long time with English pointers and I was running around the country showing dogs and, and uh, with a good friend of mine, Will Welch. And we, uh, we were really successful in, uh, in the field trial industry. And, you know, just like anything else, there's only so much you can do in a day. You know, we had 30 or 40 dogs at all times. We were training and we were at horses and horse traders and all this stuff. And we were, 
we were doing that, and I was guiding, and I owned a taxidermy shop, and boy, it was it was a crazy life back then. But you know, we were young. You know, we're not so young anymore, so we uh, prioritize things. And my hunters, they they wanted to hunt the DFR ranch. You know, we we hunted all these great ranches, and and uh, had a lot of good memories on all those ranches. But a lot of these guys wanted to stay stay at the DFR, so. You know, that's when we started building facilities at the, at the DFR. And uh, the DFR ranch became a commercial hunting ranch. Um, well, then, you know, you open up a big can of worms and and uh, your overhead goes really through the roof then. But, you know, we made it work and uh, we've been pretty successful. So the reason we were, we, we were able to make it work is because my philosophy was you must have a diversity in your hunts. So we couldn't operate if we only hunted whitetail. So because we're limited on our season with Texas Parks and Wildlife and whitetail's antlers fall off every year, so we can't do anything during the summer. So we... We, we, we looked at the business model and we said, okay, we've got to keep these employees busy year round. I've got to keep myself busy real, year round and I need a paycheck year round. So what we did was we said, okay, we're going to whitetail hunt. We're going to exotic hunt. We're going to quail hunt. We're going to predator hunt and we're going to prairie dog hunt. And so people say, why prairie dogs? Well, prairie dogs, hunts are during the summer months. And so, you know, Travis Weir, there is no sky, there is no limit to Travis Weir. So he says, well, let's hunt Wyoming and let's hunt Texas both because we love being in Wyoming in the mountains. Let's go find some prairie dog country in the wild, in the mountains of Wyoming where it's cooler. And so here we go, we get in the car, we're driving around in Wyoming and we're we're knocking on doors and we're going into bars and we're talking to these people and saying, Hey, you got any prairie dogs? And pretty soon, man, we got, we got prairie dog country out the wazoo and it's at 7,000 feet. It's 80 degrees every day, man. This is great. So we, we did prairie dog hunts for a long time. Um, some, and it's funny, you know, you tell the, you tell these prairie dog hunters, let's go to Wyoming. It's cool. The prairie dog towns are giant. We got an awesome place to stay. We can, fly fish during the afternoon while we're not prairie dog hunting. We can prairie dog hunt in the morning, fly fish in the afternoon, prairie dog hunt at night, in the evenings. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of them said, a lot of them did. A lot of them went, went with us, and they had a great hunt. And the ranchers loved it because they got rid of the prairie dog, so it was a win-win situation. But a lot of the guys we would call would say, we want to come to Texas. And I say, okay, well, we're going to hunt. It's flat. It's hot. It's 100 degrees. But – they wanted to come to Texas. So what I'm getting at is that was a good way to make sure my staff had a paycheck during the summer months, kept my guys sharp, and it kept the business rolling. Well, we were hunting whitetail. We were hunting predators at night. We were hunting exotics, and we were prairie dog hunting. And we were mule deer hunting too, actually. I forgot about the mule deer hunts. We, were, we mule deer hunted for a long time as well. So we were, I, I mean, I was running and gunning when I was young. That's all I did. I hunted seven days a week. I lived, breathed, hunting. That's all I did. And, you know, I found time somewhere to run this business. I don't even understand how I did it, but I did. So our customers hunted was over and over and over and over. And they were doing exotic hunts, white tail hunts, all this stuff. And so I got wind of this helicopter hunting thing coming online to be legal. But I've been doing it since I was 20 years old. So the ranchers would pay us to run the helicopter and, and get rid of their unwanted. Back then, it was mainly coyotes. So back in the early 90s, we didn't really have a big pig problem, or we didn't think we did in Texas, especially in West Texas. We had a few, but not a whole lot. So they were paying us out of their pocket to fly their land and, and get rid of their coyotes. And so in 2010 – the state of Texas came out with this pork chopper law that allowed us to um, take clients in the helicopter as a gunner for hire. And 
by then when we wake up and man, we got we got pig problem in Texas. Big pig problem. So when we first started, you know, we were signing up ranches left and right and shooting pigs for these guys, shooting coyotes and and I was basically just doing it for customer retention. That's what I was trying to find. So what I wanted to do, my customers, they were very loyal to us, and they still are today. But I needed a way to keep these clients hunting with my company. And so there's only so many whitetails, not so much whitetails. They'll shoot. Now, these guys will shoot as many whitetails as you can put in front of them. There's only so many axis deer they're going to shoot. There's only so many addicts they're going to shoot. There's only so many scimitars they're going to shoot. There's only so many black buck they're going to shoot. So I needed another avenue to give these customers another reason to come on a hunt. So then I started helicopter pig hunting. So the, the company helicopter pig hunting. Um, so I did this solely to keep the customers that I had to give them something else to do. Well, little did I know that this was going to turn into this monster that we have today. So then the corporate clients jump on board for customer entertainment, all this stuff. And it's, and, and this is, this is going, you know, year by year by year by year by year until today. So 10 years ago, we started this and here we are in 20. So, and these guys were loving it. You know, they were coming hunt after hunt, hunt you know, and, and they didn't have to worry about taxidermy. They didn't have to worry about taking animals home and trying to find space on the wall. Because believe me, my clients that were hunting with us, their walls were full. Because these, some of these guys, they were hunting with us over and over and over and over. And, and there's only so many animals that your wife is going to allow in the house or, or you can possibly house, you know. So it gave them something to do. And, and we can do these hunts year-round. So um, progressively, it, it just progressed. And we started scaling back on our prairie dog hunts um, and because we just didn't have time with our, with our helicopter hunts. So these helicopter hunts fill a void there that, uh, that we needed. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is the hunting business as a whole, it's, it's a very hard business to manage because in most cases it's very seasonal. And that's why a lot of these outfitters that you see are not able to hunt year round. They have to take on a second job. But we're very fortunate at Texas Specialty Hunts that everyone that is involved with my company, it doesn't matter if it's the salespeople, the accounting people, the human resource department, the guides, the cooks, whatever. They have a year round job and they have a salary coming in every month. So a lot of times, it's hard for these – I'm reading some of these comments here. Wendell, no, it's not, it's not, the, um, it's not the, the ranch that we used to have our retreats on. It's, it's another ranch located 10 miles west of San Angelo. It's a DFR ranch. Um, I sold that ranch. Um, shortly after I graduated from Angelo State University. And uh, a few years later, I purchased a DFR ranch. Um, so back to, um, back to what I was saying. The, the hunting business is a very, very unique business. It's a great business and I've had a really good, good time with it. But if any of you guys are thinking about hunting a, uh, starting a hunting business, you know, there's just a lot of things you got to think about. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of vehicles, a lot of maintenance, and there's just, you know, there's just stuff going everywhere. You know, you've got to figure out once you get it going, how to, how to handle all the call volumes because it gets, 
you know, before we had this problem in the U.S. that started in April, you know, I was getting between 10 and 25 calls a day on people wanting to book hunts. You know, it slowed down there for a little while. Um, but, you know, now we're back full steam ahead. So you've got to handle the call volume. You've got to be able to handle your customers. You've got to be able to deliver what you promise. You know, I was on the phone earlier with a, with a potential client that has never hunted with us before. And um, he had a very specific group that needed specific and a specific agenda for these hunters. So we talked for about an hour and came up with a good plan for this group of hunters. And so we're, we're at Texas Specialty Hunts, we're diverse enough to where we can customize any of your, your guests, your family into a way that suits that group the best. So what this hunt may suit, this, this group may be very experienced. They may be very niche on what they want. Whereas this group over here may be, be, may be beginners and they don't know what they want. So it's up to me to say, this is what they need to do. And so if you just call us, we'll discuss that with you in depth and we'll make this hunt customized for your group to where everyone gets what they think they should out of this hunt. And another cool thing we do here at Texas Specialty Hunts is, you know, we... If it's a corporate hunt, we generate a PDF flyer for your guests that we send to you that has photographs of what they're going to be doing, your company logo, um, and we email that to you. You can email it to your customers. It has the date, what they're going to be doing, address to the ranch, et cetera. So it just, it just makes those guys feel a little bit more secure about where they're going. So, um, but as far as, you know, I don't want to get too much into pricing, but yes, hunting is expensive these days. I agree. Um, and some of these hunts, you know, some of us like me will probably never be financially be able to go on some of these hunts. Fortunately, I, I get to tag along with a lot of my customers and guides. So. I get to go to these cool places like Turkey and Spain and, you know, Africa, all over Africa and, you know, Alaska and all that good stuff. But, you know, it's just perks of the business, you know, it's this, they want me there for my knowledge. And so I get to go to a lot of these cool places. Whereas a lot of us, you know, if I had to go on my own, I probably never would. Um, so it's been a good gig for me and uh, it's been you know, it's been really good. And I think, I think 2020, 2021 is going to be a very good season for us. You know, like I said uh, last week, we've got a lot of big whitetails out there, a lot of big typical whitetails. We've had a good year. Our genetics are in place. So if you guys want to book whitetail hunts, we're ready for you. Um, we've got plenty of, plenty of pig country. You know, right now we're sitting, I don't know, I haven't figured it up lately, but you know, we're over the two and a half million acre mark. So we've got two over two and a half million acres that we actually hunt on our helicopter hunt. So basically what we do is we, we rotate. So we'll hunt this ranch a day. We'll go to this ranch tomorrow, this ranch the next day. And then as we come around, you know, these ranches over here where we hunted today and tomorrow, They'll start calling and say, hey, we got pigs again. You guys need to get back over here. So by the time we get back to them, you know, we're ready to go. And and they're ready to have us. And so, you know, we're, we're firing on all cylinder, cylinders again. We're busy. Um, there was a little, little lull there for a little while when people were so uncertain on what they wanted to do or what they could do. But now everybody's, everybody's coming on board and everybody's hunting again. So that's good. Um, you know, New Mexico has got some things going right now that is going to be a little bit, I want to be politically correct on this, iffy. So the last I heard, New Mexico has got a 14-day quarantine in there. Anybody, any out-of-state hunters that are coming in, they're, they're wanting to quarantine everybody for 14 days. So 
that's uh, that's something we've never seen in, in the hunting industry before, but hopefully they'll get that rectified. They may have already fixed it. I don't know. That's just the last that I heard. A lot of our international hunts this year, I know I've, I've put some of those on hold myself. Um, I was going to Greece for an Ibex with a client. We put that on hold. Um, I had a big trip in Zambia that we were putting together for, for the Vince crew that hunts with us for 26 years this year. Um, I think we're going to be putting the Zambia trip on hold. Um, so my international hunts this year are probably not going to happen. I'll probably stay here in Texas. Um, I may go to Colorado, may go to a couple other places on some elk hunts and stuff with the same guys, but I don't know. We'll just see, see what happens. Um, but you know, as, as far as today, the, the divided fine ranch is a ranch that I own, um, here in Texas and, that's on that's firing all cylinders. Don't worry about coming here. We're we're in good shape. Um, Texas specialty hunts is good and healthy. We're busy. So you guys call Mercy, call Rob if you have any questions about booking a hunt. Or you can always shoot over to the website, TexasSpecialtyHunts.com. Check out what we have to offer. Um, I think you'll find that we we have a lot of things to offer. You know, we have you know, we have the, the we now have the Pheasant Lodge up in South Dakota. Um, so that that's a good hunt. Um, I was able to take my boys up to Thunderstick at the end of their pheasant season last year, and uh, man, we had a great time. You know, John, Carrie, Kim, um, Dana, all those guys. Uh, up at Thunderstick, they put on a, a good hunt. Um, the lodge is fabulous. The views are great. So if you guys are looking for a, if you guys are bird hunters and want to go up and uh, do a pheasant hunt at Thunderstick, get a hold of Robert Mercy and and they'll take care of you. Um, you know, we got a lot of the international stuff, but I'm I'm not even going to go there because you know I just don't think any of that stuff's going to happen in the near future. So Thunderstick's a good outlet, and they start hunting up there in September and I think they wind down somewhere in March or April. So just call those guys and they, they know all the details on that end of it. I'm not, um, I'm not as knowledgeable about Thunderstick as those guys, but I have been there and it's a great place. So that's about it for this week. Um, I'm glad you guys have, took your time out of your Friday to join us and Sometime next week, we'll come up with a new topic, and we'll discuss it next week. But, again, thank you guys for uh, for joining us, and thank you for your business. We really appreciate it. We know you have a choice in the, in the hunting industry, but uh, but thank you guys for coming back to Texas Specialty Hunts. All right. With no further ado, we'll see you next week. Thank you.